So, Peter, thanks for joining us on this midweek catch-up. First of all, let's look back at Saturday's game against Morton. In the end, did you feel it was a, a point gained or, or two dropped? Once we went 2-1 in front, it was definitely two points dropped. There's no doubt of that. Um, I thought we were lethargic the first half. I thought positionally we didn't play well enough. Um, we turned the ball over too many times. We were really slow in everything, really. You know, I mean, simple things like throw-ins, it was they had 10 ages to get the ball back. And I know that's what they do down at Greenock, you know, but you've not let the, the pace of the game drop. And we knew they were trying to slow the game down right for the first ball that went by. They didn't give us it back. And the goalkeeper's away walking into the corner. So we have to dictate that tempo. And we didn't do that. And I think that showed in the performance. Um, I thought we were slow on the things that we're good at. I thought, as I say, we turned it over too easily. And I, I just felt it was one of the performances, especially first half. Set for start of the second half was better. But then we get ourselves the opportunity and then we go 2-1 in front, as I say. And it was a massive disappointment to concede the goal the way we did, you know. So another long ball in the box. And we knew that was probably the ball that we're going to be going for. We spoke about it all week, just a ball in the box for deep. Uh, but we didn't have enough pressure further up the pitch, I say, to keep going on about attackers being the first line of defence. And we didn't do that well enough for both goals because if you if you think about it, both balls were just long balls into the box. One ends up with a penalty and one ends up with obviously a fluke goal. But if we cut it out to its source, then we don't have that opportunity to get that fluke goal or that penalty kick. You have said previously that the team's never going to be on it 100% every week, but I suppose when they are maybe slightly off it, the good thing is that they kept on battling away and managed to, to grind out some sort of result. Oh, they've got great guts. I mean, these guys give 100% everything. Every single day they give 100% trying to do their best. And Saturday, we, we didn't think well enough. It wasn't we didn't run hard enough, we just didn't think well enough. I think that was a big difference for me. I think they've been excellent throughout the, the period we've been in. As I say, and, and Saturday, as I said, I'll never ever say they don't try. I'll never work hard enough. Their work ethic and their desire to do well is commendable. Um, I was just disappointed with certain aspects, as you, you know yourself when you watch us play. So we were disappointed at that. The, the big thing for me is I could sense the disappointment in the players and they came off after the game really disappointed. And that's always a big show. And listen, going to Morton's never easy at any time. You know, any team can go there, as I say. It's very, very difficult. Sometimes you can wait for you know, you think, well, that was a great point. We're just disappointed because we're in a position, to, we put ourselves in a position after we 1-0 down to be 2-1 up to concede the way we did. So it definitely felt like two points dropped. But as you say, it may be an important time uh, uh, point as you go along further in the season. Obviously, over the summer, it has been a bit of a transition. So it is a new system, slightly new players, still trying to gel everything together. Are you pleased with the way that all that's coming together? Did Saturday give you more food for thought for, for going ahead? Well, definitely. I mean, I think, as I said to you, we have players that we can adjust. We'll, we'll never be a one-trick pony in the respect of that. I think it's important like that. And that's why I said to you, we brought players in. They have to be slightly different to the other ones because if you bring everybody in the same, that's what you end up getting the same as. And um, so we brought players that can play in different positions. We can do different roles. I think that's going to be important for us throughout the season. You know, we've got to adjust to certain things that we feel will help us to win a particular game. I think that's going to be important for us. And sometimes you'll come in and you'll think, well, he played really well this week. Then if the next week he finds himself on the bench for whatever reason. And the reason for that is, is because we feel for that particular game, maybe this sort of system is maybe going to help us a little bit better. So I think that's important for us. What we know is we've got very good players. We're a very good squad of players. You know, and I'm delighted with them. I say the squad of players who's de desperate to do well, desperate to be successful, you know, and I think that that's what we're trying to do. And as I said, right for the day one, we're here to try and win the league. So we know we have to perform every week. We have to try and get to that level every week. And the old cliche is, is probably as if you're not going to win a game, you make sure you don't lose it. And I think that that was the thing in sat uh, Saturday that probably disappointed. I'm still getting, because when you go 2 1 in front with the quality that we had on the pitch, probably Morton shouldn't have seen the ball in that period. And we just didn't do that well enough to kill it off. And even when we go, Coley gets a half a chance late on for a great move. You know, Kai getting down for a great ball for Graham Dons. It goes back to Coley. You know, and you'd think just with his quality, he hits the target. You can end up winning the game 3 2. Toddy's missed a fantastic chance in the first half with the header when we weren't playing well. So we still created chances. We get your striker still scored goals. So there are positives from it for sure. But, um, I think the boys are obviously disappointed as you, you are because you, you feel it's an opportunity lost to try and get three points for a very, very difficult venue. 
this week you've signed Leon Jones, another central defender added to the, the group there. Um, tell us about how his signing came about and why you feel he was appropriate to bring in. Well, we'd heard of Leon in the summer and we'd watched a lot of his stuff and we'd done very well. He had an opportunity, there was probably opportunities to go to the MLS, but because of the, the way it is, it's been added on for another year of studying. He didn't really want to go through another year of studying. Maybe he was talking about coming back. We'd looked at his stuff and we were impressed with what he had. He had done him with the way he plays and it was a position that we feel in that we're doubling up, as I said to you before, we're trying to double up in positions that it becomes very competitive against each other. And I think we've done that with Leon because he can cover anywhere across the back line. You know, he can do that. Um, he's had a great grounding. He was at Harps as a youngster, with a couple of injuries, uh, issues. And then he went out, decided to go on the American route. Um, a wee bit more intelligent than the rest of us. And went the American route, done very well over there. And as I said, there was an expectation that we kick on and go to the MLS. So... Once we knew there was an opportunity to come back, we asked, invited him in. Did he want to come in and train for a week? It's ended up being a little bit longer than that, just because of certain situations. And we've probably had him in for about 10 days now. And his attitude and his commitment, his quality has been excellent. So we're delighted to have him on board. And as I say, it's another one that's going to push guys that's in pole position at this moment in time. And I think that's very, very important that we do that. We've got Reese Breen in at the back as well, who's jumped at the bit to get games. You know, we've got big Vitus who's done very well when he's been in the team as well. So there's three guys that have been out of the team, considering the three guys that's in the team. So I'm really, really pleased that we're getting the cover in most of the areas now. So we've got to make sure that, as I say, this is the most competitive areas on the training pitch. Because then when we come a Saturday, you know you have to be your best because the guy behind you wants your position. And I think Leon gives us that. One of the players you mentioned there, he's been another one that's played in America quite recently. Do you feel that that's... Uh, a market that maybe Scotland should look at more in terms of players coming out of the college and university setups um, across there? Is, is that an avenue you think could be really beneficial? Well, I think when you look at Lakes of Reese, it's quite, slightly different because he went over there just to take it in because obviously he'd been at Queen of the South last year and then went away Orange County. So he played in the games over there. So it's a different environment. And I think for young players, anything, any, any learning experience, you know, because if it's academically, I think it's, you've got to learn the game because the game is about thinking. Everybody can run. You know, everybody knows their individual jobs, but can you think and play at the same time? I think that's the big thing because that, that's probably what separates the very best. They think quicker. They, they see the pictures, but then they can execute them because they can think quicker, you know? And it's not just about the, the football. You've got to know everybody's job. And I think when you've got that learning environment, I think it gives you a wee bit more of that, to be perfectly honest with you, because... Their, their studies over there are so much geared towards the, the more fuller picture, you know. We want our players to make sure, obviously, they've got a, a talent and intensity and want to be footballers. But as you say, the intelligent ones in the respect to understanding the game, and you want to be able to take that on board. So America has definitely got strong players, very tough leagues. I mean, some of them are going to the Champions League now. They're not they're going for America, which was never heard of before. They're signing from them. The college is not going to... Uh, Borussia Dortmund has been a big place for taking in American kids, people that's been through the American college system. So it's, it'd be stupid for us. I mean, we, we open the doors to everyone, as everybody knows. doesn't matter what they are. The biggest secret is, can they play football? You know, and are they good enough to come and play for us? And we'll take that opportunity no matter where. And if we can afford to do it, we will definitely. I think that's a great credit to the boys. That's what we try and scour. We scour to make players and find players that are better than the ones we have. And I think that that's only credit to our boys here, that we have to find hard to try and replace them because you never know in football. You know, you end up with, God forbid, an injury. You end up, somebody moves on. You have to have that quality to replace them. And that's what we're trying to do all the time. So it definitely is a market. It's, I mean, you go over there now, most of the German clubs have got two or three guys coming out of American colleges playing for them. So it shows you it's a big market for Germany. So it'd be, very, it'd be remiss of us not to do that and look at that market also. Just finally, on we on personally... Um, I read that he, he was part of Kentucky Wildcats' most successful um, team winning the league in the Cups, and that's attracted interest internationally from um, China. That must be great added motivation for him to have that, knowing that if he could play well for Dunfermline, when he has that chance to, to go and represent his country, that, that must be great for the Pars as well, though, to, to have those kind of players with those kind of um, ambitions. Absolutely. And as you say, you can see why, you know, he's attracting that because you can see the way he's about his training. You know, it's a, a fully committed young man who wants to do exceptionally well, wants to have a career in football. He's made the sacrifices to try and do that. And that's getting him the honours of, 
leading the team and doing them very well. I mean, they loved him over there. So we thought it was important. But you can see that right away with his, his attitude to his training. So, and as you say, winning trophies, I think that's always important. It's not a bad habit to have is winning things. And it's a big thing we talk about. You're trying to win the league, trying to win everything we do, trying to win the tackle, trying to win every first ball, you know. So we've got to try and do that. So that's what you try and do. You want to try and have that mentality. And the more winners you have and the more guys that's desperate to win, the more chance you have to be successful. I think that's that goes hand in hand. And the see Leon's got that great um, desire to succeed. So hopefully that can push the guys. It's not team to stay in the team and push him. And if he gets an opportunity, it's up to him then to keep it. We will come into contention then for Saturday, I assume. Any other team news to give us in terms of players either maybe coming back from injury or, or maybe missing out due to injury? No, we're delighted. Young Ryan Dow has been on the, the pitch for us the last two days, uh, taking part in full training in the last two days, which has been fantastic to see. You know, So we're delighted at that. That's been a massive uh, plus for us. So we'll just take our time now. So he, he gets back in. First, he's obviously playing the floater role, as you usually do when you come back from injury. But now he's he's fully a contact, you know, he's passing, he's turning, whatever's there now. So we're absolutely delighted to have him back on board. You know, young Lewis McCann's out in the grass doing his running and his rehabilitation is getting closer. So we're hoping maybe two weeks he'll be fit. Young Lewis Martin, obviously, a little bit longer. Willow's a little bit longer as well. So we're hoping maybe Willow will start out in the grass maybe within the next week to 10 days. Um, and, and we'll take it for there. So... And if we can keep clearing injury ourselves, we'll be delighted with the group that we have, you know. But as you said, as long as the window's open, we're always greedy, you know. But we'll, we'll only bring, as I said, right from the start, we'll only bring players in we feel is capable of taking us to a different level. In terms of Saturday against Paddock Thistle, a team we've already played this season in the Premier Sports Cup, albeit away from home, does that give us a bit of a marker and a benchmark in terms of where we're at and where we need to get to? Well, we're no Partick's players. I mean, that, that goes without saying, you know, but they've changed their system. They've had Lewis Mayo, who was here last year, has joined them, you know, so we know they've changed the system, the way they play. So it's a completely different game, as it always is. Every game's completely different. doesn't matter if you played them yesterday. It's completely different. So we're, we're very well prepared. They're very well prepared about us. So we know it's a very tough call because Partick, even though they've just come up, everybody knows they're more than being capable in a, a championship table uh, team and above. People forget it was probably only three years ago they were in the Premiership, so three or four years ago maximum. So we, we, we understand we have to be at our best, you know, and that was proven on Saturday. We weren't at our best, especially first half, and it was proven we got our backside felt, you know, because of it. Because And then all of a sudden, we come out and do a wee bit of what we're better at. But we, we know it's a very, very tough game. Um, and one, as I say, we'll have to be at our best to get something. But hopefully, as I say, we've had a couple of knocks early for the game. And hopefully they can recover and hopefully we'll have everybody to choose from. Uh, um, a wine, Bon Williams, when he spoke to us earlier in, in the season, had mentioned how making East End Park a fortress was was key to, to a successful season. Winning on Saturday would really um, keep that momentum going following the two victories in the Premier Sports Cup. I think it's always important when it's your home ground, you always expect to win. But as I said, uh, we've got to have that mentality wherever we go. You know, wherever we go, we're here to win. And that's the players I've got to have, you know. It doesn't matter. Yes, it's fantastic being in front of your own supporters. I think that's the biggest thing. We go there on Saturday when we're getting close chances or anything, or the goals, it's a silence, a deathly silence. And then you watch television and everybody else seems to have away supporters in. So that was, that, that was disappointing for us. But as I say, so it's delighted to be back in front of your own supporters. And, and we always want to send them away with victories. We've said it all season. We've said it for day one. They want to go back and enjoy their Saturday evening, you know, and there's nothing better with your beer or your fish and chips on a Saturday night when your team's won. And I'm no different. I enjoy my beer and my fish and chips on a Saturday night when we've won. I definitely don't like them. They didn't taste as good on Saturday night, that's for sure.